Hello, this is D, and I'm back with another video. Well, AMD just wrapped up their RDNA 2 GPU presentation, and I have to say that I'm very impressed. Now, a lot of people were doubting that AMD could take on NVIDIA for the crown of top gaming GPU, and they surprised everyone today with the reveal with the 6800 XT as well as the 6900 XT. Now, these GPUs are going to take on the 3080 and the 3090 from NVIDIA. Now, we don't really know the ray tracing capabilities of these GPUs because they really didn't put those on the charts. I am going to think that it's going to be a little bit lower than Ampere and about the same or better than the Turing architecture. So for the first time of ray tracing being on the AMD GPUs, I think that's a pretty good outcome. Now I'm excited to get this GPU in and test it for myself because you have to take it with a grain of salt all the charts that they put on the screen. Now I'll say this from past experiences with AMD that they're usually pretty spot on with their charts so I don't expect it to be much different when reviewers get it. Nonetheless, we still have to wait until independent reviewers get these cards in their hands and reveal the benchmarks. Now with that said, what I did see today was very impressive. Now the 6800 is taking on the 3080 and it's beating it in a host of games. Now it's not beating it in every single game, but it does beat them in a lot of games. And of course, over time, as the drivers mature, you get better performance. And that also goes for the Turing architecture. The bottom line is that the RTX 3080 has competition finally from AMD. Now I'm going to still give some advantages to the RTX 3080. I think the performance on that card is absolutely crazy for the price that you're getting it for. I also like the ray tracing capabilities as well as DLSS 2.1. Now that is a big advantage that they have over AMD's GPU. As of this time they don't have a technology that will compete with that. They said that they are working on some super resolution technology that will come out later in time but until then we have to give DLSS 2.1 the advantage now with that said I still think that both of these GPUs are very good they're very capable it's good to see AMD finally beating the top end GPUs from Nvidia even if it's not in all games in most of the games that I saw on the charts today it definitely beat out the RTX 3080 now the surprise of the show was the 6900 XT now we did know about this card it's been rumored for quite some time that they had an 80 CU GPU that would be coming out on the RDNA 2 architecture now today we finally got to to see it and to everyone's surprise it was competing with the 3090. Now it didn't beat the 39 all across the board but it did beat it in a few games and other games it was just a little bit under the 3090. However AMD has undercut the 3090's price with a $500 cheaper SKU. So you'll be able to get the 6900 XT for 999 US dollars and that really makes the 3090 look extremely expensive. Seeing how it only scores around 7 to 10% better than the RTX 3080. So it's a really interesting time from AMD right now. AMD also showed the 6700 which looks to compete with the 3070. Now it was beating the 2080 Ti by up to 15%. So this is a good showing for AMD in general. Nvidia really has to look at their stack of GPUs. I think they're going to make a lot of adjustments. I think we're going to start to see a lot of super cards coming out because AMD today truly hit it out the park. AMD also confirmed the rumored Infinity Cache. Now the buses are a little bit smaller on these GPUs but the Infinity Cache makes up for that and you're able to get the bandwidth that's needed for 4K resolution. Also these cards are performing well at 1080p and 1440p resolution. And AMD even took it a step further. If you pair this with their Ryzen 5000 CPUs, you'll get an additional performance out of your GPU. So this is really a good outing for these AMD GPUs. They have far exceeded my expectations expectations. The only thing that's left is for me to get it in my hands and test it for myself. Now we also got some information today about the Xbox Series X as well as the S. Now for the longest time on this channel I've been pointing out that the PlayStation 5 has been missing various features that have been confirmed for RDNA 2. Now the features that are missing I've been talking about were machine learning, mesh shaders, and variable rate shading. Now I will say that machine learning wasn't really confirmed for the RDNA 2 architecture so that makes me believe that this is a custom solution on the Xbox Series X. Now I remember some reports going around that the PlayStation 5 would have RDNA 3 architecture on it. Well, Microsoft has machine learning on the Xbox Series X, which is not confirmed for 
for RDNA 2. So does that mean that the Xbox Series X has RDNA 3 features? Now I'm just joking of course, but it is good to see that Microsoft is doing some innovations on the Xbox Series X. Now we also found out that the Xbox Series X is the only console that has mesh shading and variable rate shading that has the full feature set of RDNA 2 and this cannot be said for the PlayStation 5 and now finally it's official. Now of course there's NDAs and I guess Microsoft couldn't say anything until AMD came out with the full information on the RDNA 2 cars. Now that day obviously was today and now we're getting the full information on the Xbox Series X that it is indeed full RDNA 2. Now I've said this for quite some time and a lot of people were throwing eggs and throwing stones and calling me every name in the book. I was called that I was clueless. I didn't know anything about tech. And I'm kind of used to it, but it is a little bit disheartening to be honest, especially when I have good sources for this information. Nonetheless, I was proven right once again that the PlayStation 5 does not have mesh shading. It does not have variable rate shading. Now, like I said many times before, if Sony had this solution on the PlayStation 5, they would have said it a long time ago. There was no way that they were going to let Microsoft have the advantage with the Xbox Series X having these features if they were present on the PlayStation 5. Now, this also confirms all the things that I was told before that Microsoft waited to the last minute to get the full RDNA 2 architecture inside of their console and this is why the tools are late. This is why ray tracing is missing on some of the games. Now I'm just going to read a little bit of the article here. It comes directly from Xbox.com. Like usual, I'll link it in the description down below so you guys can check it out for yourself. Now they go on to say that we here at Team Xbox would like to congratulate and celebrate our amazing partnership with AMD on today's announcement of the Radeon RX 6000 series of RDNA 2 GPU. Use. It was incredible to see AMD demonstrate the power and potential of the new AMD RDNA 2 architecture can deliver to gamers around the globe. AMD continues to be an industry leader in CPU and GPU innovation, bringing next generation capabilities to the PC, console, and cloud. The long-term strategic relationship between Xbox and AMD over the past 15 years beginning with the Xbox 360 is at the heart of the Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S. With the upcoming launch of the Xbox Series X and S on November 10th, together we are ushering in the next generation of gaming, delivering a level of power, performance, and compatibility never before seen in console gaming. Powered by AMD's latest Zen 2 and RDNA 2 architecture, the Xbox Series X and S are the only next generation consoles with fully hardware support for all of the RDNA 2 capabilities AMD showcased today. So right there we have confirmation that the Xbox Series X is the only console to have full RDNA 2 features. So that means that the PlayStation 5 does not have variable rate shading, it does not have mesh shaders, it doesn't have machine learning. Now like I stated earlier, machine learning looks like Microsoft put that in on their own on their console, but like I stated many times before, if Sony had this feature on the PlayStation 5, they would have said it by now. It doesn't appear to be the case and Microsoft not only has the advantage in power, they also have it in the feature set as the GPU is a full RDNA 2 variant. Anyways, I wonder what you guys think about all of this. What were your thoughts on AMD's presentation today. Were you impressed with the performance of the 6900 and 6800? Do you own an RTX 3080 and regret your purchase or were you looking for an RTX 3080 and this has changed your mind? As well, I'd like to know your thoughts on the Xbox Series S and Series X being the only next generation consoles to have the full RNA 2 capabilities that AMD presents on their PC GPUs. Anyways, let me know in the comment section down below and like I usually say, please like, share and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys on the next one.